Hi, I'm Danny. Welcome back to another video. In today's video, I want to show you a new tool for diagnosing electrical issues. This is the V500 Pro. It's from a company called V Diag Tool. So if you can remember, I did a video on the V200 Pro, and this video got a lot of great feedback. A lot of people purchased this, and a lot of people loved it. This has a lot more options. Now, I don't wanna sit and talk about the options. I wanna show you what they do. So, let's get started. So as far as hooking the tool up, turning it on, you have a power cable, goes to the positive side of the battery, negative cable, negative side, and then right here, there's a switch. You just put the switch, power it on, and here's your tool. Now, as far as checking the fuse with this tool, it's as easy as touching the test point. If you see voltage on each side of that fuse, you know you have a good fuse. So this is much easier than using the test light to check a fuse. Now, if I was gonna power something up like a coolant fan, I'm gonna go to the component test and just say, okay. I'm going to get my auxiliary ground lead. I'm going to find the black wire. That's the black wire there. And then I just take my tip, come over here, and then I just power it up. So if you can see right there, it's like 4.75 amps that cooling fan is pulling, which is a good cooling fan. So I've got my window disconnected. Here's my harness. And right here, I have a green wire and a yellow wire. These wires go directly down to the motor on the driver's side. So I just need to supply ground on one side and power on the other, and the window should go up. So I've got my T-pin in the green wire. And I'm going to take my tools auxiliary ground lead, hook it here, and then I'll take my tool and all I need to do now is supply power to this ground wire. So here we go. And then look at the tool. It says amp right there on the second line. Look at the amp reading as I power this up. I can test all my windows that way without ever pulling the panel, but you do need a schematic. If you want to see a more in-depth video on this, I have a couple of them on my YouTube channel. So here's what you get in this kit. Let's open it up. So here's the V500 Pro. What I wanted to show you is the screen. It actually flips so you can get a better view at it. And I just want to pull this out. It's got a 20 foot cable. And then these are the clamps that are going to hook to your battery. And then right here, you have the alligator clip and that's going to go for the auxiliary lead. That'll go in there. We have a couple of piercing probes. So piercing probes go in there, they grab the wire, they put a small little hole in there, and that's how a piercing probe works. And you got one for the positive side and the ground side. They also give you a couple of extensions. These are about three feet, a little over three feet. And then these are good you can actually plug that in this side. And if I come over with the tool, it can go right into the top. So that's where it gets its reading. You set that aside. And then also, it's got a probe tip that also goes in there. And these are all banana jacks. And then you got a back probe and that can 
come in here like that. Or you can use this other three extension, three foot extension. Put it here. And this would go right up here also. So you could do your testing like this. This is for updating the tool. There's actually a USB here to update, which brings me to this other hole right here. This is your relay tester. That goes here, and this is going to connect to your relays. And I'm going to show you how to do all that. And then this is your broken wire finder. And I'll show you how to use this also. It's got a manual. And the manual actually has directions in here to where it'll actually show you how to hook up that relay. And then how to do all sorts of other stuff on here too. So let's go over the menu. The first one is probe. So this is what they call smart test. So this is probably where you'll be checking fuses, checking for power, checking for ground, and it'll automatically detect if it's got power on the circuit or there's resistance on the circuit. So the next one over, that's resistor. So this is where you can check the resistors or you can check the resistance in a circuit. And then we have multimeter mode. So multimeter mode is just like having your multimeter. So now you don't have to go get your multimeter. You can just use this tool. So oscilloscope mode. So oscilloscope mode will give you a waveform of what's going on in that circuit. Voltage supply zero to five volts. So I can actually program in how much voltage I want to go to that tip on component. So this is where you're going to be powering up components. This is great because you can see how many amps that component is actually pulling. Relay test. So you can actually test a relay to see if it's working or not. And it actually has little diagrams on how to hook it up. Really nice feature. Injector mode. So on this mode, you can actually pulse the injector. Uh, you don't have to go buy another tool. That is just built into this tool. So settings. So this is where you're going to change the language. You can even turn on and off those headlights. They're on off now. Let's just go ahead and turn them on. This is also where you update the tool. Let me show you how to check a relay using this tool. So I've got the tool sitting here. I've got the relay harness. I've got the manual because it tells you exactly how to hook up that harness to the relay. And I've got a relay here. So I'm going to go down to relay test. And I'm going to say, OK. I'm going to take my relay harness, connect it to the tool. And when I see that green light, I'm ready to go. So I'm also going to take this and say, OK. And there it is. It's showing me how to test a relay, where my connections need to be. This is on a five pin, but I'm working on a four pin relay. So I'm going to go one over. So now it tells me, don't hook up the green lead. So I'm OK with that. I'm going to back up. So if I go here, this is 87. The red one's on 87. This is 30. The black one's on 30. And then my auxiliary ground lead on the tool, that one's going to be on 86. And then we just take our probe and we push it here. And you can feel it clicking on and clicking off. But let me show you something else I found. Let's go ahead and just take this 
put it in here and I can just put this on there so I don't have to be around. The switch has three settings, moment, latch, and pulse. We're gonna use pulse here. So now it's pulsing. It pulses. And I can feel the relay turning on, the relay turning off, on, off. So I could just leave this for a couple of hours, come back and make sure the relay is still working. What a great idea. So the V500 can supply zero to five volts. This is a great feature to have, very hard to explain, but I'm gonna do my best. Right here is my coolant temperature sensor, down here. I've got the connector off. I've got my meter here and it's reading five volts. So the computer sends five volts and it goes through the sensor normally and then whatever's left of that voltage comes out to the other end and it goes to the computer. So if I was missing the five volts, I wouldn't know if the computer wasn't putting it out or I had a broken wire. That's where this tool comes in because the car runs off 12 volts. This tool is able to supply five volts to that sensor. So I would supply five volts to the connector. I would go to my computer. I would see if the computer is saying five volts. If it was, then I would know my wiring is good. The other way you can use this is you can dial it down to maybe two volts. And if you had, let's say, a trailer wiring from the front of the trailer to the back and the wire harness was cut off, you would know which wire you put the two volts in because it would be the only wire that you have two volts in. The other ones would be zero volts or 12 volts. I hope I explained that good. On to the next menu item. Now I'm gonna show you how to check the crank sensor using the V500 Pro on my 2009 Honda Civic. This is a three wire sensor. I've already got the harness pulled off. And there's three wires as you can see here. So one's gonna have power, one's gonna have ground, and the other one's going to be the signal wire from the crankshaft. So I want to go to probe and I'm going to push OK. Now I just need to see if there's power and ground. So this one has power. The other one here should have ground. It does, it has zero ohms to where the one on the other side has 11.92 volts, battery voltage. So the middle one is gonna be my signal wire. So to check that, I gotta plug this back in, hook it up and start the car. So we're gonna go and back probe it. I'm gonna come right back here with my back probe. And now it says 4.9 volts. Let me plug this in and we'll start the car. I've got the crank sensor harness back onto the crank sensor. So I just need to go to oscilloscope, say okay. And we want transverse. Okay, there's our oscilloscope. And let's go start the car. So here's our oscilloscope wave pattern with the car running. This one looks good. It looks like it's going zero to five volts. Let's say your car didn't start at all. Let me shut this down and let's disconnect the coils so the car doesn't start. And let me show you what it would look like if you had a car that wouldn't run. So the car is cranking, but it's not starting. If you saw this pattern, this is a good crank sensor. It's going zero to five volts. So you would have to look elsewhere for your problem. Next, I'm gonna show you how the automotive circuit breaker finder works to find broken wires. So I have a little demo set up and here's my wire. And then here's where it's broken right here. So I'm gonna put a piece of cardboard over this 
And this would be the same as if it was behind the panel in your car or there was carpet over it. So to check this, I need to take my circuit probe and I need to put it in breaker finder mode, which is this switch all the way at the bottom. And now it's putting a frequency signal into this red wire. So let me hook the red wire to my circuit or wire. And then I just turn it on with this switch and then I push this button. So over here, I have no signal, but if I bring it here, this is the frequency signal. So anywhere this frequency signal is in this wire, that's a solid wire. So when I lose this signal, that's where my break or open is. So let's go ahead and follow that wire. It's gotten quiet right here. It's loud here. It's quiet here. So somewhere around here is a broken wire. Pull it up and sure enough, that's my broken wire. I got a signal there and I got a light signal there. Strong here, weak over here. So this is how the automotive circuit breaker finder works to find the broken wire. My final thoughts on the V500 Pro, and I'll even compare it to the V200 Pro, which I've been using for quite a while now. I did a video on this a while back, and I'll put a link to that video in the description so you can go back and watch that. These tools are very similar. They both supply power, ground, they activate components. Um, big difference, you can see the screen and then the V500 has more features. And the one I liked besides the screen, being able to fold it and see it better, I like being able to activate a component and seeing the current it was drawing. I also like being able to supply a reference voltage of zero to five volts. Those were my two favorite options the oscilloscope function was pretty fun to play around with and I could see it just fine on this screen. The open binder, both tools have this in it and I gave you a short preview of how to use this. The V500 comes with those piercing probes, which I really like that. Now for some of the negatives on this. so. On this one, the cable is a little bit thicker and it's a 20 foot cable. On this one, the cable's thinner. It's easier to move around and it's 20 feet and then you get an extension also. So it's a little bit longer. This one also has a cigarette lighter adapter and the V500 Pro doesn't come with that. So I'm not going to tell you which one is best for you because I don't know. Um, they both work great. If you're more of a gadget guy or you're doing more heavy duty repairs and you just want all the extra features, this isn't much more than the V200. I hope you learned something in today's video. If you did, give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing. As always, Thanks for watching and I'll see you in my next video.